It's finally here, the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D, the CPU that will surely save us from one of the most disappointing rounds of processor product launches in recent times. It's important to put into context what X3D is and why it's so crucial to AMD and indeed gamers. So 5800X3D, 7800X3D, these legacy products are as close as we're going to get uh, to Halo offerings in the CPU space. But 9800X3D goes one step further in cementing AMD dominance in the CPU market. Because despite the best efforts of Ryzen 9000 and the latest Core Ultra, the 7800X3D remains, or rather remained, the best gaming CPU on the market. 9800X3D comprehensively beats that, making it by far and away the leading processor in its field, obliterating the competition. Lots to share on this one, but first of all, a message from our sponsor. Digital Foundry is proudly sponsored by MSI's range of next generation QD OLED monitors, available in 32 inch and 27 inch 16x9 configurations, along with 32x9 49 inch and 21x9 34 inch ultra wide models. These are some of the best monitors we've ever tested with incredible motion clarity, OLED burn in protection, AI features, and genuinely game changing performance. Check the video description to learn more, and for UK viewers, the chance to save big on MSI QD OLED displays, including £300 off 34 inch and 49 inch ultra wides. Okay, so Ryzen 7 9800X 3D. This isn't an iterative product by any means. Rather than adding on the extra L3 cache above the CCD, AMD has popped it underneath this time around, a move that sees temperatures go down and clock speeds go up. The 9800X3D offers higher base clock speeds and much more L3 cache than the non-V-cache equipped 9700X. But it's also worth noting that the TDP has climbed to 120 watts versus 65 watts and optionally 105 watts for the 9700X. Boost speeds are still 300 megahertz slower on the X3D chip, but up against the 7800X3D, there are some nice gains. Um, an additional 500 megahertz on base clock and plus 200 megahertz on boost. For context, there's only a 100 megahertz leap in boost clock when going from the 7700X to the 9700X. So the new design really does make itself known. At $479 slash £449 MSRP, this is an expensive chip. But the performance, it's explosive. And yeah, when it comes to the best of the best, the Halo products, uh, premium components, if you like, they do attract, well, a premium. So look, we're somewhat late with this video owing to the PS5 Pro Deluge, so let's dip into the benchmarks. Uh, the 9800X3D here is going to take on its predecessor, 7800X3D. The Ryzen 7 9700X, which is essentially a power-constrained version of the 9800X3D without the 3D cache. And finally, Intel's most potent gaming chip, the Core i9-14900K. We're also going to look at some older processors for those on older Halo products, looking to upgrade perhaps. So we've got the Ryzen 7 5800X3D data here, still a great chip by the way, and the Core i9-12900K. For details of test conditions and surrounding components, and indeed all of the benchmark data, because there's a lot of it, please check out Will Judd's excellent Digital Foundry web review linked below. And thanks to Will in general for doing all of the hard benchmarking work in making this video possible. Okay, so you remember that CPU Limited Flight Simulator 2020 benchmark, right? Not much scalability across resolutions because there was so much demand on the CPU. This game though, absolutely loves 3D cache and whatever AMD has done to improve its performance against the 7800X 3D is astonishing. We're almost 22% faster. That's 22 points clear of what was already the top performer, meaning a nigh on 33% increase over the Core i9-14900K. Intel's finest is no slouch. So again, this is astonishing stuff. We're almost 40% up over the 9700X. 
which 3D cache apart is architecturally very close to the 9800X3D. I'll say it again, astonishing. Switching to 12900K and 5800X3D, AMD's first foray into 3D cache is still a strong performer, beating the 12900K by 16%. Remarkable because that's a DDR4 system there beating a DDR5 based 12900K. It's also a touch faster than 14900K as well. 9800X3D obliterates those older chips though. 50 percentage points clear of 12900K, 30 points ahead of 5800X3D. Now those older chips are still good gaming processors to this day which highlights that 9800X3D is in another league. Let's move on to our automated benchmark run through Baldur's Gate in Baldur's Gate 3. We're seeing a 25 percentage point increase for 9800X3D over the outgoing 7800X3D and a 47 point lead over the non-3D cache 9700X. 47 percent. It's almost comical. Across the bench, the 9700X is actually very, very close to the 14900K, which is only like three points faster across the whole run. But what that means is that the 9800X3D beats the former by 47% and the latter by 43%. These are the kind of gains that ideally we like to see in the GPU space when a new product comes along. And rarely do we see it with CPUs. So this is legendary stuff. Looking to the older chips, the 5800X3D is beaten by 12900K by around 12 points, but the differentials with 9800X3D remain huge. The new chip is 56% faster than the 12900K and 75 points clear of 5800X3D. The hype is real, as they say. There's no let up in our automated run through the city in Dragon's Dogma 2. 17 points ahead of prior champion 7800X3D, but a somewhat more restrained 15 point advantage against the 14900K. So yeah, there are going to be games where specific architectures from different vendors will perform better. Still, with 32 points ahead of the 9700X, and remember that's an 8 core 16 thread Zen 5 processor, but it doesn't have the 3D cache. And that 3D cache this technology is a genuine game changer for gaming applications. Looking at the older chips, 9800X3D has a 32 point advantage against 12900K, but that widens to 46 points against the classic 5800X3D. So look, 5800X3D, it's still an amazing processor. It's not always humbled quite so much against AMD's new offering. Uh, but yeah, while Ryzen 9000 maybe didn't justify an upgrade, the X3D versions genuinely are a game changer. Starfield next, and this one's interesting because if memory serves, it was one of the only games in our suite that saw the new Intel Core Ultra 9 285K actually beat the 14900K. So there is some Intel friendliness to this game perhaps, but the 9800X3D still powers ahead just not by such a mammoth degree as some of our other results. It's a 12 point lead for the 9800X3D, rising to nigh on 24 points, 24 points against the 7800X3D. Not into 3D cache? Well, the similarly octo-cored 9700X is beaten by 26%. So perhaps have a rethink on that front. Now, looking back to older processors, the 5800X3D has around 90% of the 12900K's performance, but the 9800X3D beats the Intel chip by 33% and the AM4 GOAT by 48 points. Cyberpunk 2077's Cherry Blossom Marketplace remains one of gaming's most CPU constrained areas, right? Especially with Ultra RT effects in play. The 9800X3D beats out the 7800X3D by 15%, rising to 19% against the 14900K. And this seems to be another game that's generally quite friendly to core processors. The non-3D cache 9700X, the new chip beats it by nigh on 24%. And yeah, looking back at our older CPU champions, X3D old versus X3D new sees uh, the 9800X3D beat 5800X3D by 21 points though the gain against 12900K rises to 35%. 
another show of complete dominance from AMD here. So those are the specific examples that stood out to me from all of Will's testing. But later, I took the 7800X3D as a reference point. Remember, that's already the best gaming CPU on the market. Then worked out the percentage differentials for the 14900K and 9800X3D. And here we go. Uh, some commanding leads there for the newcomer. But looking at Forza Horizon there, I suspect we've actually hit GPU limits at 1080p there, believe it or not. While the Counter-Strike 2 measurement also looks suspiciously low versus the trend. Anyway, a Geo mean here sees the 9800X3D 15.49% faster than the 7800X3D on average. But if we disregard Forza, that rises to 16.9%, which got me thinking about the extent to which the performance differentials may actually be noticeable, bearing in mind that the likes of Crisis 3 Remastered, F124 and Counter-Strike 2, well, the frame rates there are so high, I do wonder how many people could actually tell the difference. So I took another look at the tables there and disregarded games that average at frame rates above 165 frames per second. Kind of my personal limit where I can tell the difference versus anything higher. Uh, that was from testing a 240Hz monitor against a 165Hz monitor, by the way. Now, what this does is to mostly remove the more mediocre results with the average gain now rising to 20.54% over what used to be the best gaming CPU. Just an interesting little extra here, but I wonder if we'd see a correspondingly higher increase in overall averages just by concentrating on those games that run at relatively lower frame rates. I could go on, but the point is clear. Even with the arrival of Ryzen 9000 and Intel's Arrow Lake, the existing Ryzen 7 7800X3D basically unassailable. It was still the CPU champion and nothing was going to get in its way. Nothing. Until now. It's rare to see gen-on-gen -gen gains so strong in the CPU space, but more to the point, I'm willing to bet there are many, many gamers out there perhaps considering moving on from their 12th gen core Intel products, or older, or maybe, just maybe, considering an upgrade from an AM4 based system. Now to be clear, the 5800X3D, still a superb product, and even though it's end of line now, the 5700X3D is almost as good and much cheaper than anything else covered here today. I got mine from AliExpress for around £130. That's astonishingly cheap. But in terms of convincing upgrade options, 9800X3D is by far and away the best choice for gamers, assuming you can stomach the price point. So, last week, these chips went up for sale, and while some of the price gouging over the already steep MSRP was unfortunate, I was genuinely tempted to buy one. My 13900K is still great for gaming, mind you, but this, this is a class apart. Um, the only thing stopping me, well, <laughs> there's a Ryzen 9 9950X 3D coming, almost certainly, which is better suited to my content creation needs. Dare say it'll cost a fortune, but I can't wait to see what it can do. In the meantime, for a purely gaming orientated build, and perhaps for your first DDR5 platform, this is the new state of the art. And just generally, this is simply brilliant work from AMD. To have your existing Halo product beat off more recent competition is one thing, but then to provide a genuine step change in performance up against that doesn't happen very often. Needless to say, the Ryzen 7 9800X3D is highly recommended. So then, more benchmarks, RAM testing, power consumption analysis, and much more are in Will Judd's web review, so do check that out. But in the meantime, that's all from me. Uh, please like, subscribe, share based on the remote possibility that you enjoyed the content, and press the bell button if you fancy it. Maybe, just maybe, you'll get instant notifications. Maybe you'll just help Digital Foundry in the algorithm-based free-for-all, but it's worth a shot. A DF supporter program. Join us for early access opportunities, news updates from the team each and every week, bonus material, DF Direct privileges, and much, much more. And, of course, store.digitalfoundry.net 
to emerge into a wondrous Narnia-like world of magical merchandising wares. But that's all from me on this one. Thanks for watching and supporting Digital Foundry.